If you're going to tour Bob's Red Mill, we're going to go quite a ways down this way. Be ready to walk fast. <laughs> they used to call me Rapid Robert. At 88, Bob Moore moves you know, I... quickly. <laughs> he needs to hurry up. Stopping only to show off the latest, greatest machines. We ought to keep moving. In one of the packaging rooms. Pretty cool. Okay, just starting it up now. The machines here appeal to his mechanical roots. This does 60 bags a minute. That's pretty fast. All right, let's go through here. But before we get too far, this line right here, line 12. Let's slow down for a moment <laughs> and see how Bob got to oh, dear, dear, dear. this place. <laughs> Pictures on his office wall hold the time capsules. If I were walking in this office for the first time, it'd take me hours to get out of it. Bob grew up in Los Angeles, yeah, yeah. and as World War II raged on, he started work at a furniture company. He was 14. And they, they needed, you know, um, somebody to tear the old upholstering off, and it was a great job because it was, all these couches and things were all full of money. <laughs> he learned to play the violin and then piano. Bob later joined the service and got a job at an electric company where he met Charlie, the love of his life. Charlie, <laughs> who I married. An exciting uh, future you know, awaited, including business with his father. Then my dad dies. This is my dream was eventually to do something, it would have been in advertising, uh, some kind of media, that kind of thing, because that's, that's what he was in. And uh, uh, he just up and died. And uh, it was a shock to me. Cause still, honest, Pat, it's still a shock to me today. I'm going to picture my dad. I look at him up there. It's him on the end there. And he was, he was just the sweetest guy that ever was. God, it makes me cry. Eventually, he moved on. Still I, recovering, I he spotted something that spoke to him. And here's a big sign that says, coming soon on a corner, coming soon, mobile gas station. And then, then underneath it says, be a mobile dealer, call this number, mobile gas station. Gosh, I could do that. He dove into the business, working exhausting hours. I worked from, from uh, 6 in the morning till 10 at night. That's the hours they wanted me to work, seven days a week. Wow. And I did that for the first year. But he and Charlie tired of the smog in L.A. and eventually sold the mobile station to buy another gas station, which later failed. Yeah, well, uh, eventually, they moved the north to Redding, California, well, here, where he found a book. book at the library that changed his life. You got a camera on it. There it is. That's how it looked to me when I walked into the Reading Library. It was on the table. Somebody had pulled it off the stacks and looked at it and decided not to check it out, and they just tossed it on the table, and I walked in. John Goff's mill is the story of a man who discovers an old stone mill, begins grinding flour, and quickly develops a loyal customer base. It spoke to Bob. It's lovely. Great book. It's inspired me intensely. He began writing letters to mill owners trying to find quartz milling stones. It worked, and he eventually opened his own tiny mill in this Quonset hut. And just like in the book... People beat a path to our door, just like they did to George. And it was great. We couldn't believe it. We had a whole wild, crazy idea. And I think we must have been the only one in the world that was doing that. He was on the front end of the healthy eating movement. But as the business grew, he felt a spiritual calling and a curiosity. He decided to read the Bible in the original language, Hebrew. It means everything to me. It just seemed like there was a kind of an open window somewhere there where there was some things that would be just wonderful to be able to go back and see the basics. Which, of course, begs the question, did you grow up in a Christian No. Family? Well, yes, but no. But you weren't going every Sunday or anything? No, no, no. I was active in church because the, uh, uh, the girls were prettier there. <laughs> That's not a nice thing to say. It's probably true, probably though. Probably true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He also did he not know Hebrew. Hebrew without vowel points. So uh, at the age of 49... I really gave it a good college try, as they say. Bob and Charlie left their grown boys to run the Reading Flour Mill and moved to Portland, not for flour, but for the Bible. It was 1978. Sold the house, sold everything. It's amazing, Pat. I mean, I, 
when I think back at it, if, if I ask myself to do that again, I think you're out of your mind. You're so well established. Yeah. Why take the risk? Yeah. I don't know, Pat. I don't know. Sometimes uh, I just don't know. But I, it wasn't the wrong thing. It led to everything. My own personal Six months studies. later, studying at Western Evangelical Seminary and struggling with Hebrew, Bob and Charlie took a walk near Oregon City. She quizzed him with vocabulary cards as they passed a barn. Yep, that barn. I said, hon, that, that's a flour mill. And I walked up to it and walked up the steps and looked in the window and there's equipment, bucket elevators, grain cleaners. I said, this is a mill. Where was this, you know, when the boys and I, <laughs> I know it was here. It had been closed for years uh, and it was for sale. So poor Charlie, she says, oh, well, well hon, I, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, nothing, nothing, nothing. I, I, she said, well, I, I thought we were going to learn to read the Bible in the original language. I said, we are, hon, we are. But uh, uh, is, I need, I'll just call the number. I didn't know. I really, Pat, I really didn't know. I mean, I wasn't trying to go against myself or against her or against God or anything. It was a crazy moment in my life. Crazy moment. Perhaps a spiritual moment. He bought the land and the barn, hired fellow seminary students to help with repairs, and had it all up and running in three months. And again, customers loved his healthy grains. I just felt like I had a real handle on my life, a real comfort level. A short time later, a buyer from Fred Meyer asked if Bob could sell the stores his flour packaged in these type bags, which still line the ceiling of his office. It was a massive order. The orders forced him to run the mill almost nonstop. <laughs> and I can remember walking up to the top, walking up the top floor and throwing the window open and just leaning out at three in the morning or something and looking out over the neighborhood, oh, just, just over there, just a few blocks from here on Rothy Road and, and feeling the whole mill, if you sit still and kind of lean on the, on the uh, sill of the, of the window and the whole building would just move like this, like it had a life of its own. <laughs> it's really cool. God, I love that. That was so nice. Then a serial arsonist set it all on fire. And then after all this, my mill is burned down by an arsonist. He got the call in the middle of the night. So I went on down. There's this flame 60, 80 feet in the air and because uh, I only lived a little ways from it. Bob asked firefighters to save the millstones that ground his flour. They would split if they got too hot. It worked. Fire destroyed the building. Water saved the stones. But the company hung in the balance until he thought about the workers, one in particular who'd been with him the longest and had just bought a house. <laughs> Where's the monkeys on my back now? <laughs> I've had some very interesting things in my life, that motivating things that have given me a shove here and there. It's pretty cool, really. And so he rebuilt. And the company has grown and grown and grown ever since. Bob's Red Mill is now in 81 countries with annual revenues of $300 million. And even though Bob left the formal study of Hebrew, he never left the teachings of the Bible. And I had this epiphany based on the scripture to do unto others as you would have others do unto you. It just resonated with me. He started a monthly profit sharing for employees 27 years ago. And now he and his four partners, including his wife, Charlie, are selling the company to the employees. I will fully agree that I've taken what the Lord has given us in the fullest sense, the scriptures, basically, and tried my very best to, to see the value, the, the daily uh, value in these things by believing them. Absolutely get a hold of it. Hold it tight and believe it. 
and then see what happens. <laughs> it's been quite a ride for the man uh, pulled through life by his fascination with milling I've and the scriptures. And it's how Bob's Red Mill grew from nothing to a global supplier of high quality foods. I was really having a good time, but this is what I was made for. I knew that. I really knew that. It didn't take me long to realize that there's nothing in this world that, that this is what I, what I need to do. And I did it, and I've been doing it, and I'm doing it today. Bravo, bravo. That's all you get. There ain't no more.